hello. Welcome to Creating a Village, the podcast where we come together to embrace the power of community by allowing voices from all walks of life to share their personal experiences and insights. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Whether you're returning or joining us for the first time, I'm your host, Millie, here to nurture the village within you and help us all thrive on this beautiful journey we call life. I'm a 20-something year old who loves collecting quotes and hearing about people's experiences. And in today's episode, we'll be diving into our segment, Childhood Chronicles. This segment is where we'll take a nostalgic journey with someone as they share memorable moments and lessons from their childhood, exploring the pivotal experiences, influential figures, and pivotal moments that have contributed to their character and shaped their path. Today's childhood chronicle quote is, Jada, go give her a hug. Let's set the scene, shall we? So, as I said, I'm 20-something years old. I graduated college last year, HU 22, you know. And this story takes place in middle school, sixth or seventh grade year. I went to a charter school. And in the American school system, a charter school is a school that receives government funding, but operates independently of the established state school system, which is located. And I lived in Georgia at the time of this. And the charter school was a startup school, meaning it had no prior grades. Startup schools start with a very base level class, which was sixth grade. There was no seventh grade and there was no eighth grade. The sixth grade class would be the upperclassmen. So as they were promoted to each grade, they would be the next class and then another class would come in underneath them. And so since the school was new, you know, they're trying to get in children, the teaching staff, everyone, they're all fairly just trying to make an impact in the world, you know? But honestly, that has nothing to do with the story. (laughs) The reason why I mentioned It was a startup charter school was because a building, we were housed in a church. We had school in a church's building because they were so kind enough. I don't know if they were renting it out or not, but they were so kind enough to let us use their space. It was kind of set up like an office, if you will. Like you can walk into a lobby and if you walk into the hallway, it's like beige and then there's just doors there with the rooms. It reminded me of an office. And so it wasn't really the feel of a school. That's also not important either. (laughs) Well, that is important. Okay. And so we're in this church's building. When you walk in, there's these glass doors. The floor is carpeted. And if you've ever been into kind of a community center, you know there's a bulletin board to your left-hand side on the wall that has upcoming events. And then there's another section, section off by double doors that are open that leads into the main lobby where there's a window for the receptionist to be at for you to be able to ask questions. And then further down the hall are more double doors. Hopefully that kind of sets a picture for you. One day, I'm either leaving early or maybe it's after school going home, but there weren't a lot of kids. There were no kids in the lobby area. And my mom was coming to get me one way or another, or she could have been volunteering for an event. But my mom's in the hallway. We were talking about something. And a student comes by, we're going to call her Susie Bell. 
Mm -hmm. Susie Bell comes by and she asks me for a hug. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I was right next to my mom when she asked me for a hug or if I was walking towards my mom when she asked me. Either way, I said no. She would ask me for hugs quite often. But Susie Bell had a condition where she smelled a certain way of a bodily liquid that comes out of you. You have to use the bathroom. And so I'd be like, no, I would like to not give you a hug. I would just say no. I wouldn't say why or anything. I'd be like, oh, no, I'm sorry. And I'll go about my business. So either way, my mom saw this encounter and she's like, Jada, why wouldn't you give her a hug? And I was explaining, you know, bodily function smells. And she said, well, Jada, you never know what anyone is going through. You never know why someone is asking for a hug. It takes a lot of courage to ask someone for something. And they could really need it. And so she said, Jada, go give her a hug. Susie Bell was still in the hallway. So I went back and I gave her a hug. Ironically enough, maybe a couple months later, I'm after school again. And I happen to be walking inside of I guess what you can consider the school hallways. And in the bathroom, I hear some noises that can be likened to a belt going across someone's body. And you can hear words being said. They're not kind words. And it is Susie Bell in there with her mother. I only know that because, well, one, I could hear the cries of Susie Bell and I could hear her mother's voice. But also I walk away from the bathroom because you know, like, well, first you're shocked. You're standing and you're shocked. I walk away around the corner I peek my head and they come out the bathroom. I do tell my mother about that. Um, some things are done, but I remember also one of Susie Bill's closest friends at the time was telling us that Susie Bill was getting abused by her parents. She didn't have that great of a home life. And so her asking for hugs, which is her seeking comfort from people that she felt comfortable with, people that she felt wouldn't harm her or neglect her, This episode is not only about just providing people with comfort when you don't know what they're going through. It's about just being aware of your surroundings and having an open mind, not just rejecting people based on kind of book cover interactions, but also the importance of human touch. I have an aunt who isn't married, doesn't have any kids, and occasionally she would come over to our house and we'd be interacting and I always gave her a hug when she comes over because that's what you do. You hug your family, you say hi, so great to see you, and she's actually one of the reasons why this podcast was started too. She would always drop so many gems about life in general. I'm like, I shouldn't be the only one to hear this. She also has a podcast. It's 
Mm, I will leave it in the description because I would like to revamp it so the name might be different than what it is right now. But check it out. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. And one day she came over, you know, just sitting on the couch watching TV. And she says, Jada, you know, this was the first time I've been touched after I gave her a hug. This is the first time I've been touched in months. Because people who live alone, they don't really have human interaction that often. And even if they do, wait, let me rephrase that. They don't have human touch interactions that often. Because you can go see someone and y'all just have a conversation. You might not get a hug. You might not even shake hands. You don't realize how often you don't touch people, especially now after and during the days of COVID. You barely fist bump people. Human touch is so important for your soul, for your being. It just kind of breathes life into you. So for someone to go months without something as simple as a hug, it's kind of devastating. You know, when I was younger, my mom used to do these hugs. She would wrap you real tight in her arms. And then on each number, she would squeeze one two, three, four. And then on the phrase, she would just squeeze you tight and rock you back and forth. Good for the soul. And then she would let you go. And that was something really comforting for me as a child. I would look forward to those types of, types of hugs. And I never knew the importance of being able to just have that human connection in my life. Touch is so important. When premature babies are born, you know, you may not know, they are put in incubators and they have the gloves that you can put your hands into so that you can touch the baby so that they can survive. That's how important touch is to your survival. And that's why I wanted to make this episode. Because that was, that was an interaction that really stuck with me. How I would turn down someone for a hug when they really needed it. Or at least they wanted it. I'm not gonna make major assumptions. But like when it seemed they... They could have used it. It taught me not to take things at face value. Like, oh, this person just asked me for a hug because they want to like mess with me or something. Sometimes people really need things. And it's okay. To, it's okay to be uncomfortable. I'm not saying go out into the world and if someone asks you for something, you have to give it to them if it makes you extremely uncomfortable. No, you have to be able to set your own boundaries. But also, do take into consideration. Just be a little open with your perspective on people. My camera keeps going out of focus. Oh. oh, yes. You can also watch these on YouTube. <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you learned something. And I hope it changed your perspective on human connection and physical touch. We invite you to be an active part of our community by sharing your own stories, experiences, and insights. Connect with us on social media, visit our website to submit your stories, or even consider becoming a guest on the show. Together, let's continue to build a vibrant village where our voices are heard 
our journeys are celebrated and our connections grow stronger. Until next time, keep embracing the power of community and nurturing your own personal growth. Stay curious, stay compassionate, and keep creating a village wherever you go. Bye! <laughs>